cloud. All righty. So um, here we are on May 28th and it just feels like kind of life, life isn't stopping. Life just isn't giving us a break. There's been a lot to process again this week. Um, and I really feel that the um, Uvalde, um, the, the shooting in the school there uh, just kind of was a, another tipping point uh, in our collective conscious, uh, consciousness and kind of navigating through so much um, uh, grief and fear and how do we keep our, our children safe. Um, I was mentioning that I spent last night going to uh, my daughter's using me here. She's standing on the other side of my computer. I, my daughter works with young kids in, in a theater program. And I spent last night watching, you know, kids from, I don't know, the age of eight to 12 or so put on a production of The Little Mermaid. And it was like just pure, like balm for the soul of being around children, happy and laughing and playing and kind of exactly what, what I was needing to feel nourished right now. So the focus for our class for today is um, centering, is centering. And um, it's going to involve some kind of playful standing balance and ways that um, we really have to kind of draw our attention in towards the center as we go through some twisting shapes and uh, things that might pull us out of center and what helps us come back into center. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with the book called Centering by M.C. Richards. Uh, she's a uh, kind of political activist and poet and potter. And uh, she um, writes about centering or wrote about, she's no longer alive, but wrote about centering in relationship to pottery and how, um, especially if you're working on a potter's wheel and which I, uh, I have done in the past. And if you've ever done that, you know how um, wobbly it is if the clay is not sitting at the center of the wheel. And I think it's a powerful metaphor for what it is that we're seeking to discover or kind of come back home to in ourselves on our yoga mats is when we're not residing in that center, we're wobbly, right? And life is going to, any of the movements of life are gonna pull us out of that center much more easily. And, um, and I'm just going to say, you know, I'm not centered all of the time either. I don't, I think it's part of human experience to go in and out of center. And I certainly felt my own wobbles this week. Uh, so when we are wobbling, we're not in somehow kind of like failing the yogic test or the life test. We're human. Um, but I think that it's also profoundly important to have practices that help us come back um, to that midline and that alignment with self and um, to know how to, you know, kind of return again and again. And so from a kind of yogic perspective, and of course I speak about this in the, in the new book, The Therapeutic Yoga for Trauma Recovery, um, I speak about pratyahara as part of that practice of that which allows us to direct our own life force energy back in towards self. And it can provide a respite for the outer world in a way that nourishes yourself with your own awareness. So I really hope that throughout this time that we have together, you indeed will feel quite nourished by turning the lens of your attention inside. When our attention is focused out on the world, which can happen when there's a lot happening in the news, when there's a lot that's, that we're wanting to understand and wrap our minds around, it can lead to a fatigue and it can lead to for a depletion of our resources. So, um, you know, so we're going to come back and really reinforce a sense of alignment and a felt sense of centering within yourself. Um, I have a few quotes and some poetry that that uh, kind of feels aligned with with my intention for today. Uh, the first is a quote from M.C. Richards in her book Centering. Uh, the first two are. And uh, she writes, am I willing to give up what I have in order to be what I am not yet? Am I willing to let my ideas of myself, of who I am as a person be changed? Am I able to follow the spirit of love into the desert, to empty myself even of my concept of emptiness? 
and that process of taking the clay and turning it into the empty vessel, which becomes something that can hold more. She writes, centering is a verb, an ongoing process, a way of balancing, a spiritual resource in times of conflict and imagination. Centering is an alchemical vessel, a retort which bears an integration of purposes, an integration of levels of consciousness. And centering for me is about how we find ourselves again and we come home to ourselves and we greet ourselves and hopefully we have the ability to greet ourselves with kindness and gentleness. Um, so I've chosen two poems for today, both around discovering or refinding yourself. The first is by Derek Walcott. The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from your, the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes, peel your image from the mirror, sit, feast on your life. And along these same lines from Rupi Carr, today I saw myself for the first time when I dusted off the mirror of my mind and the woman looking back took my breath away. Who was this beautiful beastling, this extra celestial earthling? I touched my reflection, touched the woman of my dreams, all her gorgeousness smirking back at me. My knees surrendered to the earth as I wept and sighed at how I'd gone my whole life being myself, but not seeing myself. Spent decades living inside my body, never left it once, yet managed to miss all its miracles. Isn't it funny how you can occupy a space without being in touch with it? How it took so long for me to open the eyes of my eyes. Embrace the heart of my heart. Kiss the soles of my swollen feet. And hear them whisper, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. So in service of centering and remembering. I'm gonna shift onto my mat and I'll invite you to come into your own sweet spot of arriving. Perhaps in this initial moment of turning your attention inward, of sensing your own body here, perhaps even starting with those words, thank you. Thank you. taking that time to notice what is it that you're bringing with you into this practice. Mind, body, breath, emotions, energy, creating more space 
for you to arrive to fill the vessel of yourself and to empty that which no longer serves you. If you'd like, maybe taking a moment to rub palm to palm, generating a little bit of warmth in your hands and your arms. And then allowing your hands to come to stillness in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra. And sensing perhaps a little bit of warmth or tingling in your hands a slight space between your palms, that remembrance of the space, the space within. And perhaps joining me with the words, I am aligned, I am aligned with my true north. I am aligned with my inner compass. I am centering. And then releasing your hands. And just like that clay on the potter's wheel, let's just begin to move and rotate the spine around the pelvis. It's allowing yourself to find breath and movement together. Inhale forward, exhale back, and it's your rhythm. And then going in the opposite direction. As we enter into the space of practice, we don't quite know what's going to happen next. And that is part of the journey, the openness, the curiosity. Coming back through to center, inhale, lengthening your spine. And for our spinal movement, I'm going to invite a quality more like a spinal wave here, just allowing yourself to feel like a seagrass in the ocean or a sea fan or maybe the wheat moving in the wind. Don't worry so much about needing to control the movement or get it right. Just allowing whatever the internal impulse of movement or that sense of a wave to move through you. Lovely. And then coming back through to center. And we'll find a similar waving motion side to side. Again, maybe like the, you know, kind of sea, seaweed floating in the currents. And you can allow this movement to include your arms and your whole body or you might make it a more subtle sea wave and just allow yourself to slide side to side, maybe more like your spine is a little eel. We'll go with the sea creatures or a snake, okay? A water snake. Maybe again, your arms come into this or they stay resting. Lovely. 
and coming back through to a little bit of stillness and allowing yourself to just check in. Do you want your eyes open? Do you want to close them? What allows you to draw your attention inward? And if at any point that inward focus becomes a little too much or there's too much moving internally, allowing your eyes to open, finding something to gaze towards that roots your attention, your awareness in a sense of safety here and now. I'm going to offer up an option to come into a more vigorous breathing practice here, and you can take it or leave it. Really listen to what's right for your body. In this one, I'm going to bring my arms up kind of like a chalice, like this just just big open vessel that's going to just draw in beautiful light right in towards yourself. And perhaps bringing in the vigorous breath of fire or the Kapalabhati or Bastrika. So we're going to draw the navel back on the exhale and it's a more rapid inhale and exhale through the nose. If that doesn't feel right, long, deep breathing and just imagining light pouring in. Inhale, sweeping your palms to touch. And exhale, we're going to open side. Inhale to center. And exhale, open to the other side. And just moving with the breath. Sensing how these Open twists move you around your midline. And then we're going to pause on one side. Doesn't matter which side. I'm turning towards the right. So if I have some reference points there, my right hand is behind me. My left hand is on my knee. And just finding a little bit more depth of the twist. Not so much from the hips. Let the hips stay grounded. But allow the mid spine to find the twist. Maybe you turn your chin towards your right shoulder. But nothing is forced. Right? With twists especially, nothing is forced. We find the edge, we back away from the edge. Maybe the eyes gaze back, so that left eye is gazing towards the back of the right shoulder. And then staying in this side, and again, I'm going to stay with my right side orientation here. My left hand is holding on to my right knee, and I'm going to lean left shoulder towards the left, just taking a deeper breath into that right side body. Right arm might come overhead, and again, you might wave in and out or find a depth to the stretch. Inhale, lifting back through. Inhale, sweeping your arms. Then exhale, we're going to turn side to side. And next time you turn, I'll say it towards the left. Let's go ahead and be on that same side. It'll help planting those left fingertips, lengthening your spine, planting the right hand on left knee and finding that deeper twist, backing away as you need to. Honoring that we go for length and then depth, and then maybe the eyes turn as well. And staying on this side, taking a nice firm hold with right hand on left knee, and we begin to descend right shoulder towards right knee. 
and breathing into the left side body. And you can reach that left arm overhead. You can even press the, the left knee into the right hand. A little bit of resistance as you open. And then slowly up through to center and unwind. I'll invite you to draw your weight back enough to bring the soles of your feet together. And then similar to what we did to start, finding a little bit of that churning, that rotation, that clay on the wheel, just a little bit of movement of your spine around the legs, legs in a new shape. Your arms might kind of help with that churning and going the other direction. And then coming back up, centering. Centering is a verb. It's not a place that's a static, right? It's constantly in motion. We're going to draw the right leg behind into deer, right knee towards left foot, and the little twist towards the left, and we back out. And we find that twist, maybe lengthen, reach, and we back away. And we lengthen, reach. And finding your breath. and then back through. And from here, we're gonna take right leg ahead of the left, a little lean forward, and maybe a little walk side to side, maybe even your fingertips on the earth, just that seagrass wave. And then as we lengthen back up, extending that right leg long, and a little bit of a forward reach and retreat like that wave of their hands towards your foot and then coming back one more time waving down with the spine and drawing back in and we'll come back through the cobblers this time a little bit of that wave forward and back And wading into the right hip as we draw the left leg behind. And turning towards the right. In your rhythm, just a few movements here. Really just warming up into these early twists. Getting to know what's happening in your body today. What's moving, what feels stagnant or stuck. No judgment. And then we'll unwind, taking left uh, shin ahead of the right, and then a little walk forward and a waving side to side. And then sitting up, lengthening through that left leg and a little bit of movement and breath, forward and back. Lovely. This time, as we sit up, we'll draw both legs in front. I'm just going to turn on my mat here, both feet in front, and then letting both knees go from side the side. And you can have your hands on the ground for this, if that is more supportive for you. Or you might take your arms off of the earth and just allow the core to wake up a little bit more as we float and swim. And eventually making your way back to center and we'll soften our way to the earth.
Once arriving here, take a moment, a moment in stillness. Knees can be bent or if you prefer, legs straight. And arriving, new shape in gravity, maybe the eyes soften. And devoting your own attention inward toward yourself. When you're ready to add a little movement, I'll invite you to rock your tailbone. And we're gonna rock a little bit forward and back and you can adjust the positioning of your feet so that it feels supportive. You might even press into your feet a little bit as you roll the tailbone up, lifting sacrum off the earth. And then you can roll the tailbone down and there'll be a little space for your low back just feeling that rocking. And then an opportunity to rock side to side. So it's like I'm lifting one hip crest as the other weights into the mat and then the opposite side. And you might even press into the opposite foot as your, so my right foot presses down as my right hip lifts, right? And vice versa, so that your feet are kind of a little stabilizing factor. We roll the pelvis side to side. And we're gonna put those two motions together, creating a kind of circular action, uh, a rolling around the sacrum, so that you might roll the tailbone down and then roll towards your right hip, lifting tailbone, roll to the left. We're creating this circle. You might even imagine that your pelvis here is like a coin that's been tossed and it's kind of rolling from edge to edge. And you can take that kind of circular motion one way and the other way. And if you're finding that your brain is kind of getting confused, see if you can drop down with the center of gravity right down into the body and just let the sensations be your guide. Finding your pace of the movement, you can speed it up or slow it down. And then when you're ready, coming back to stillness, maybe walk your feet out to the edges of the mat for a moment and just knock the knees in, in, fallen bridge, broken bridge. Let the knees reside in, maybe a palm on your belly and one on your heart. Now, of course, you can always stay resting here or walking your feet closer in again. So the knees are facing up towards the ceiling. And this time, an invitation to take your right knee in and extend your left leg long. So in this one, extending that left leg long to start. And this half wind removing, allowing your hands and your right shin to greet each other. You can use your hands to compress around the um, the ascending colon on the right side here, hip flexor and psoas, getting a nice little squeeze. And then we're going to change the action. We're going to press the shin or the knee into the hand. So we've got a resistance action with the hands pressing back and maybe take that right foot off the floor. Beautiful. Now you can stay just like that or you might begin to lift and lower through your left leg. Pressing with right knee into the hands or right shin and the left leg is moving. Good, and then pause with your left leg up. 
And we'll take the hands behind the head now. And we can stay right here. You can keep that left leg, the right leg bent. We're gonna lift through the upper body, or maybe you extend the right leg long, right heel is hovering over the ground. Now this can be a little intense for the low back and there's modifications with that right foot down or that right knee bent. Finding your way in, coming back to breath. And then planting the right foot now. So we've got left leg lifted, right sole of the foot on the earth. And we're going to twist toward the left. You can keep the hands behind the head or maybe you reach the, the right arm towards the left here. And then we're going to lower left leg and lift. And inhale, lower. We'll let the upper body move as well. And exhale, draw right elbow or arm across. Good. One more just like that. We're going to hold static once again, and maybe that right leg goes long, hovering the right heel. So you've got options. You can always keep that right heel planted. Just one more breath here, and then we'll come back to center. You can place both soles of the feet onto the earth and just notice left and right sides of your body. And we'll take this to the other side. So to begin taking a hold of your left shin and sliding your right leg long and resting it onto the mat. Just a little bit of that massage, that compression here of the hip, hip flexor, psoas, descending colon. So good for your digestive organs. And then we'll switch it into an active press, shin into hands, hands pressing back. And now maybe that right heel hovers. Firmly pressing shin into hands, hands pressing back. And now maybe lifting and lowering through the right leg. Beautiful, keeping right leg lifted next time, taking hands behind your head, right? Upper body can get engaged here. We're lifting shoulders off the earth. You can keep left knee bent. You can plant left foot on the floor or you might hover left foot. Coming back to breath, what helps you come back to that sense of alignment with your inner compass? And then lowering down for a moment, we're gonna plant the left foot and we're gonna turn towards the right, maybe hands behind the head, maybe reaching that left arm long. Either way, we're really twisting and turning, we're lifting the shoulders. And then beginning to move the left, the right leg, returning towards and across. Good, lifting and lowering. And next time, staying up, staying twisted, maybe picking the left foot up and extending it, hovering that left foot off the earth. And then back through to center. So we'll have one more kind of belly up, core strengthening practice here. 
And in this one, options to either come into what we might think of as a traditional kind of bicycle sit up here, going side to side. And you might really sense, wow, I could really feel all that we just did. And you might do this straight legged. Either way, you're really focusing on moving across midline, side to side, strengthening, aligning, and centering. One more each side. And when you're even taking the head down, sending your legs long, and for a moment, really give yourself a nice long stretch. You might even interlace your hands and send your palms up overhead, reach your toes long, get even longer. Lovely. And then everything into a tight ball as we rock on the spine. Nice little self massage here. Just rock it out. And eventually rocking up and over your shins. And we're going to come all the way back into a forearm plank. And I'll offer this one up with your uh, hands clasped to begin. And just allowing yourself to kind of stay with some of this active strengthening that we've been doing. And from our forearm uh, plank, we're going to dip the left hip and dip the right hip. Really engage those deepest core muscles. It's like we're carving out the bottom of the bowl, really creating space right there to sense and feel your own presence. And then lowering your knees, your hips, widening your forearms, planting palms on the earth, and we've made our way to Sphinx. If Sphinx in any way activates your low back, you can press into the knees, lift your hips, lengthen your tailbone, and then slowly resettle. And eventually doing that a few times usually releases any tightness around the sacrum, creates a little bit more space for you to lengthen out through the upper spine and heart. You can even draw the ears back subtly. And we'll take this into our Sphinx frog twists. So frogging through your left leg here, bending here. You might take a moment to curl the right toes under, give yourself a little rock. And then untucking the right toes, we begin to turn towards the left. And you might stay on forearms or you might lift onto that left hand. And you get to choose how much of the twist serves your body. It's rhythmic and it has that same quality of a kind of wave-like motion and undulation here. And then back through to center, we're gonna plant the left forearm and left leg comes back. Noticing left and right sides of your body for a moment before we go to side two. And then bending and taking that right leg into a little frog leg and we'll tuck the toes under and give yourself a little rock. And then untucking the left toes, maybe planting the right hand and beginning to find that twist, pausing and not going past any point of strong resistance. So we really just greet the body and honor what's here today. The sacrum is very tender and hold a lot for us. And 
It's going to be something we'll really attend to a lot as we go into this twisting practice today. Good. Eventually coming back through to center, lengthen through right leg. And then widening your elbows, resting your forehead on your stacked hands. You might even widen your legs. Your feet can even come off the mat and even face out to the sides. Crocodile. Nice posture to sense the sacrum once again and send your breath there. You can always stay here longer. And if you're ready to move on, we're going to press up into tabletop. And a few moments here to just let yourself flow freely. Integrating the spinal movement and the core strengthening. And then like we explored on our backs, we're going to find a kind of uh, a circular mo movement here for the hips. And you can just allow yourself to maybe start out by noticing that you'll tuck your tail down and then send your hips to the right and lift them up and send them to the left or whichever direction you're going. And as you kind of drop into the your own comfort with this circular motion, you might notice how your head wants to kind of go in sync with your tailbone or that your whole spine begins to move with this circular action, these kind of barrel rolls and let it be intuitive. And then pausing in center, especially if it stirs the pot enough that you feel a little dizzy, letting that settle and then going the other direction. So if you can perhaps sense what is the other direction, sometimes that gets a little lost to the mind. So feel it out. Letting your whole spine, your shoulders can even come into the motion. And then slowly back to center, this time settling into child's pose, integrating. And then pressing back up into table. So a little bit of strengthening here. We'll start out just with the right leg, sending right leg back and curling the right knee under. A few just like that. And then in this next one, if you'd like, maybe bringing the left arm into the motion. So we reach through left arm, right leg, and exhale, curling under your body. And again. And this next reach, we're going to hold here, bending into the right knee, sending your left arm back and maybe staying just like this, or maybe they may contact hand and foot, and then you can kind of bow into this shape. 
doesn't matter. Either way, we're feeling ourselves between the front and the back body, the the world ahead of us and the past behind us. So we're caught between past and future and we are the tension of the bow in the present moment. And then we release back through tabletop. Maybe a moment here just to let that go. Any free movement. And then we'll find this on side two, lengthening through the left leg and exhale under and moving with your breath. And knowing that you can stay with any prior option or maybe you lift the right arm and move arm and leg together out and toward away from center and back home. One more like that. And then lengthen, hold, maybe bending the left knee and the right arm can reach back. A beautiful place to stay or maybe you make contact and perhaps kicking foot into hand, resisting with the hand. Releasing back down, let that go. Maybe wiggle your hips from side to side. And eventually pressing up into your first downward facing dog and another opportunity to walk that out, to make it yours, some free flow. You might walk out one heel and the other. And I'll offer up an option here, which is to kind of twist it out a little bit. So bending your knees and send both your heels in one direction as your knees go the opposite way. And then coming through center, bend the knees, dropping the heels the opposite direction and just side to side. Again, let it feel intuitive. Pressing into the hands, especially that opposite arm. And then we'll pause. Let's pause with heels to the right, hips to the right, knees to the left. And then maybe from here, just explore lengthening through that, that um, the left leg a little bit more, the inner right leg stays bent. And maybe you press into that left hand a little bit more. And then let's take it the other direction, across center, send the heels to the left, bending the knees, and then maybe lengthen through that right leg a little bit, pressing or walking those right fingertips away. and back through center. And then from here, an invitation to lift through your right leg. And exhale, gaze forward, stepping forward and through into a low lunge. And then your choice, you can keep the back knee lifted or you can lower it down. And just a few breaths, greeting yourself in this shape. Now you can see I have blocks here. Blocks are always a wonderful option and I do recommend them, especially as we get a little later into this practice, they will be helpful.
eventually we'll meet in that low lunge and you can do this with or without a block especially right now under your left hand. So left hand either on a block or on the floor. And we're going to take the right hand around to your sacrum and check in with that left hip. The left hip will tend to want to drop here. And we're going to keep a buoyancy, like a little balloon underneath that left hip, and then allow the mid spine to begin to twist toward the right. So hand on the sacrum, just a nice reminder that we're not twisting out through those ligaments. We're twisting out where there's more mobility in the mid spine. And then unwinding here this time, an option to lower that left knee. And I'll show this at an angle here. We're gonna walk that right foot out to the side. So there's more space and then begin perhaps to take the right hand onto the right thigh as we turn and twist toward the right. And you get to make this your own, right? So if you're wanting a little bit of support here, of course you can always pad under your left knee or take that left arm higher onto a block. And some of you, if you want more sensation, you might even drop onto that left forearm. Lots of options here. And once again, just as we explored in tabletop, you might bend through that left knee. Maybe you reach the right arm around. Maybe you're just reaching in that direction or perhaps you clasp. And as you kick into the hand and the hand resists back, feeling that openness across the heart. Unwinding here, planting the right hand. This time we're gonna tuck the left toes, bringing the right leg back, 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 and maybe stacking the hips, just opening through that right hip flexor. You can lengthen the leg, you can bend your leg. And then unwind, planting the right foot towards the left, downward facing dog. And we'll find side two, inhale, lengthening through your left leg, gazing forward, stepping forward and through. And then a few moments here to make it your own. Coming in and out of your lunge, breathing right hip flexor, left hamstring. Right knee can be down or lifted. Your movement. And eventually coming into a low lunge, this time right knee is lifted and you can have that right hand on a block. It'll kind of sometimes create a little bit more space and an option to take that left hand to your sacrum and check in with that right hip. So as we go into the twist, we're gonna keep a buoyancy, a little kind of helium balloon underneath your right hip and then letting the twist happen from the mid spine. Coming back to breath. Stunning. Unwinding here. We're going to lower the right knee and then toe heel that left leg out. So we can come in towards a dragon lunge here. And once again, making it your own, you can have that block under the right hand. Maybe we begin to turn towards the left knee. Maybe you're on your forearm, right? There's lots of options here. And then perhaps bending right leg, reaching around, clasping, maybe kicking foot into hand, or if the clasp isn't there, we're just reaching in that direction.
and slowly unwind back through the center as we curl the right toes under we can lift through the left leg and a pause here maybe to open up through the hips bent leg or lengthened leg And when you're ready, coming back through downward facing dog. And this time we'll take a nice long walk to the front of the mat, bending your knees as much as you'd like here, using your blocks to bring the floor closer if that supports you and finding your way into your first standing forward fold. A lovely place right here to release through your neck, your face, your jaw, your voice. You might figure eight through your head or nod your head yes, shake it no, move your jaw around. Ah, ah. Stick your tongue out. Sigh something out, let something go. Ah. And eventually bending a little bit more deeply into the legs and then pressing into the feet to come all the way up to standing, rotating your shoulders, a few loops here, one direction and the other. Lovely, you made it. New relationship to gravity. So from here, I'll invite you to take your hips or your feet, hips width or a little bit wider apart. And we're just gonna go side to side. A little bit of a swinging of the arms. Knees can be nice and soft here. And we'll do a variation on this. So, Feel out, you can always keep your feet on the ground. It's a little bit more stable, or you might explore lifting a heel, lifting, lifting, so that we're letting the hip turn, the heel lift. And it's just a little different action. So feel it out for yourself. You can let the breath go. Ah, ah, ah. And then slow it down. Coming back to centering. Centering is a verb. It's not necessarily a place we arrive, but that we're keeping, continuing to move towards, continuing to arrive at all moments. And if you'd like a few hip circles right here in one direction. And the other. And just like we did seated, finding that spinal wave discovering you're a taller seagrass now, <laughs> all right? So you need to send your roots a little further down into the seabed, allowing that wave to move even through your knees, your hips, your whole spine, arms, throat. Oh. And then coming back up through, we'll draw the arms back, interlace here, lifting through your heart, inhale. And exhale with bent knees, forward fold. Pausing, keeping your arms clasped here for a moment, and then maybe explore bending the right knee and lengthening through your left leg just a little, not to straight, but just enough as you gaze under your left shoulder. So a little twist here. 
and then back through center. We're gonna bend the left knee a little deeper, lengthening a little through the right leg as we twist and turn towards the right, gazing under your right shoulder. Maybe one more time each side, your rhythm and breath. And then returning to center, softening the hands to the earth and inhale, lengthen your spine. And exhale, planting your hands, stepping back and your choice how you want to get to downward dog. You might press straight there or I'll invite you to roll forward, lower knees, chest and chin. Softening your hips to the earth and a few rolling cobras here. And the gentle pressing back through tabletop. And curling your toes under, we'll meet in downward facing dog. In this downward dog, I'll invite you to take your feet a little wider to the edges of the mat and shorten your stance a tidge by walking your hands a little closer to your feet. And then we'll take a little twist here, taking right arm underneath and taking hold of your left ankle. And then you can kind of take a gaze under your left armpit. And we'll unwind the twist on that side and find it on the other side as left hand comes through and making it yours, right? You might be holding higher on the leg. You can reach under the heel, whatever supports you. Once again, we unwind and this time we can walk the feet a little closer in, maybe to each other and even closer to the hands and explore how you would like to get to the front of your mat, right? You can pounce, you can take baby steps, doesn't matter. We're gonna meet there as you're ready. Once you've arrived at the front of the mat, taking an inhale as you lengthen your spine and exhale to fold. This time, inhale, lengthening all the way to stand. And exhale, releasing your hands, samastitahi. So I'm gonna to turn to face you for a moment for a little kind of visual of where we're going from here. We're going to, I think, feet hip widths or so apart. Inhale to sweep the arms up. And exhale, we'll find that open twist that we did seated. So inhale, center. And exhale as we twist from side to side. Now I invite you to check in with your hips and notice if that hip is following the arm and see if you can resist that twist a little bit so that the sacrum and hips are staying right there towards center and just the arms are going side to side. Just that upper body twist. Good, then we'll add on. All right, so the next time we go towards the right, we're gonna inhale center. As we turn towards the right, we'll lift this through the right knee. And you might even take a little tap there and inhale center and exhale, a little balance action. Inhale center, exhale, lift tap. And we've got a little standing cross crawl. Beautiful. All right, one more time each side. 
Notice what's required of your center of gravity that helps you balance and movement, <laughs> okay? And then when you're complete, we'll come back to center. Let's find that forward fold once again. <sighs> Inhale to lengthen. And exhale. We're gonna make our way to downward dog. This time, again, I'll offer up the option to roll forward, coming all the way to the earth. And this time you can always come to Cobra again or draw your hands a little further back, roll your shoulders up back and down. And then as we lift through the upper body, maybe lift the knees. Now you're on the tops of the feet. So we've come from the floor into upward facing dog, knowing Cobra is still your option, right? And then rolling over the feet, we will meet downward facing dog. Okay, how oh, beautiful. From here, an option to bend your knees and pounce or step forward. We meet at the front of the mat. Inhale, finding a halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale all the way to standing. Exhale, samastitahi, a prayer for equal standing. I am aligning. I am aligning with my true north, with my inner compass. I am centering. Inhale, sweeping your arms. And exhale, we're going to find that same action, twisting to the right. Inhale, center. Twisting to the left. Inhale, center. Add the balance. Twisting to the right. Right knee lifts. Center. Left knee lifts. Listen carefully, we're adding on. Inhale, exhale, twist to the right. And then from here, open twist, we're gonna send that right leg back. Send that right leg back and then perhaps draw the hand down to catch the inside of your right foot. From here, maybe left hand to your heart for a moment as we lean forward slightly into dancer's pose, not Tarajasana, and then maybe extending left arm reaches, right foot kicks, resisting with your hand. We've been in the shape already, at least variations of it. Ooh. And if you come out of balance, just fine. Floor is not that far away. Find your way back in. That tension between forward and back past and future, and here you are in the middle and coming back two feet on the earth. And for a moment between sides, maybe palm to palm. And sweeping your arms to lift. Exhale, we're gonna turn to the left. We're gonna lift that left leg. Maybe you tap it for a moment. Pausing here, left leg is coming back, back, back. Maybe you reach down and take a hold. Perhaps right hand to heart. And then we begin to kick and lean, allowing right arm to reach, feeling the resistance, the contact. And slowly back up, returning. Coming into a standing flow here, bending through your knees, releasing your hands. Inhale, sweeping up. 
Listen carefully, exhale, left elbow towards the outside of your right knee. Maybe your right arm flies. Inhale, we sweep. Exhale, right elbow. Maybe left arm flies. Moving from side to side with your breath. Lovely. And then coming through to center when you're even on both sides. Inhale, lengthen through your legs, sweeping up and exhale forward. Finding a halfway lift and your own way to downward dog. Maybe progressing through the variations we've done or coming through a chaturanga. We're skipping all of that and arriving. From a downward facing dog, inhale, sweeping your right leg behind. Exhale, gazing forward, stepping forward and through. Keeping right heel lifted, checking that your feet have a nice wide base, you're not on a balance beam, and we'll begin to lift up into a crescent lunge. From our crescent, we're gonna open the arms as we have been. And then this time, taking right hand to the sacrum and giving yourself a little bit of a lift here, an exalted lunge. On an exhale, we'll sweep left elbow down towards the outside of your right thigh. Now you can always lower your right knee. Do all of this in a knee down lunge, or finding this with the knee lifted. You can always bring that hand back to the sacrum so that even here, we're really twisting through the mid spine. The sacrum is still allowed to be really stable and supported by those muscles we woke up in our core practice. And then from here, we're gonna open up through the arms. We're going to unwind, open the twist and come all the way to a five pointed star. And we'll forward fold from here. So maybe pigeon toe the feet slightly, the heels slightly wider than the toes. And on an exhale, finding your forward fold. Now, if you've got blocks and you want the floor a little closer, hallelujah, right? Like let yourself find the right support. Arriving in the shape, turning over to gravity what is no longer needed, especially just let it drip off your shoulders, the top of your head, just, oh, let something go. And we'll find a halfway lift here with an option for a twist. In this twist, left hand is gonna come kind of right under your chin and you can have it on your block. So it's a nice support here and right hand around to your sacrum and mid spine is twisting towards the right. And we'll switch it out, unwind from that side, planting your right hand, bending a long spine, block or not under your arm, and then taking left hand around to your sacrum, lengthening your spine here as we twist to the left, letting the sacrum be nice and supported and stable. You can even hug the legs even slightly toward each other to feel that stability. And then unwinding here. We'll find that halfway lift and a little bend in the knees if you like. You can even drop your heels in a little. We'll come all the way up to stand. Sweeping the arms up and around. 
a warrior two. As a transition into a reverse triangle, lengthen through your right arm and exhale. Rotating the hands, finding your way into Trikonasana. But I will offer up an option here, which is to really roll your left hip down, grounding your right hand. And then from there, allow your spine to actually twist open so that your hips actually are rolling a little bit. You're twisting through the mid spine, and then maybe you're opening up through that left arm. So it might not be as open as some of your other trikonasanas or triangles, really hugging your heels towards each other, your inner thighs towards each other. Inhale here and exhale, bending through the right knee, planting your hands and stepping back, downward facing dog. Finding that whole sequence on side two, inhale to draw your left leg back and behind and exhale forward and through, keeping the right heel lifted, nice wide base for your legs and we'll walk up on this side. Now, knowing that at any point in this practice, you might say, I need to pause and rest and take a breather, right? Honor your body finding the stability of your legs beneath you, and then perhaps drawing your arms up. Exhale as we open twist towards the left. Maybe hand to your sacrum and then exalt, lifting the right arm. You can stay twisted to the side. Maybe you gaze back a little bit over your left shoulder, grounding into the right ball of the foot breathing through the right hip flexor. And on an exhale, drawing right knee to the outside of your left thigh. Remembering that you can do all of this knee down. Nice and stable with hand on the sacrum if you like, or maybe you press palm into palm into prayer. There's no better or worse. Our twists are a rinsing practice. So good for your lymphatic system and your digestive system, cardiovascular system. You probably feel your heart rate lifting to meet the practice. Inhale, we're gonna sweep all the way open and around five pointed star. And this time, once again, a forward fold, toe healing your feet so that your toes are slightly angled in and we fold forward. I'm gonna to turn to face you in case you need to see where we're going here. We're gonna take another twist and you can always keep that hand right at center as we did, or we'll take left hand across to right shin or right foot, and then right hand to sacrum. You get the theme. And then finding that twist through the mid spine. Now, if you feel nice and strong and, and stable in your sacrum, maybe lift that right arm up towards the sky. And then soften back towards the earth. Ah, finding the middle ground. And then planting right hand or walking right hand across to left ankle or foot and maybe left hand to your sacrum as we find the twist, maybe left fingertips towards the ceiling. Slowly unwinding, unwinding back to the earth. Finding a halfway lift, a little bend in the knees and rolling up, coming all the way to stand. So I'm gonna go back this way. So I'm on my left side once again, and we'll make our way into a left side warrior two. 
really just as a transition today into Trikonasana Triangle. Lengthening through the left leg, we're going to reach, 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 but this time maybe the hand on the right hip and turning it down a little bit. So allowing yourself to really feel that stability in the legs and then just opening through the mid spine. Softening your gaze, bending through your left knee, maybe a pause in warrior two before descending hands to hand to the earth, stepping back, downward facing dog. We've got one more short sequence on each side. So I'm gonna invite that you lower your knees, that maybe you set your heels back and just pause in a child's pose or a seated pose for a moment in preparation for one more standing flow. It's arriving, gathering, collecting yourself. So as I mentioned, our blocks might come in handy for this last flow. So you might keep them nearby if you've got some, or at least one. And when you're ready, we will meet in Downward Facing Dog. And there's not a lot of postures in this final flow, but it certainly puts everything together that we've been playing with thus far. So the invitation is to inhale your right leg back and step it forward and through. And we'll come into a little shorter stance here for a pyramid shape, okay? And pyramid sometimes has that benefit of bringing the floor a little bit closer. It benefits from that. Uh, you can feel this out for yourself. As you breathe over your right leg, lengthening through your spine. And then an option to find a twist here. So we can find that twist in several ways. One is that we can keep that left hand grounded on a block or the earth to the left, or we might cross that left hand to be outside of the right foot. Either way, we're really checking in. That sacrum stays nice and balanced and you can use your right hand there. And if that feels nice and secure, maybe you extend the right arm overhead. Slowly we unwind here. And here's where a block can come in particularly handy. We're going to take this block under the left hand, and I like the highest setting for this. And I'm going to slide my right foot back enough just so I've got room for my wall. But we're going to shift the weight forward onto right foot, left hand, with or without your block. And then you can bring your right hand to your sacrum once again. Maybe staying right here, maybe adding some of that feeling of that twist toward the right. Maybe bending through the left knee, reaching back, maybe clasping. Right? We've been in this shape in a variety of variations, just letting yourself greet it once again. That little bow, no right, no wrong. And then if you had it, let it go. We're gonna let the whole thing go as we slowly step back and just step right back to downward dog. Let it go, shake it out, wiggle it out. Short, sweet, potent. And side two, inhale, sweeping your left leg, stepping forward and through a slightly shorter stance for pyramid and finding your supports here. Now, if you want to skip the twisting part of this, pyramid is an amazing place to stay. It's lengthening and strengthening right here.
And if you're wanting to find that twist, options are to keep that right hand grounded on the block towards the right with left hand on the sacrum, or perhaps you cross midline. Exploring what it feels like to twist from the mid spine, maybe the arm lifts. Right? This is a really, really deep practice. So be gentle. And then slowly we unwind here. And we've got this block, right? We've got this option as we step forward, left foot, right hand, our base, lengthening through the left leg, maybe beginning to twist toward the left. Maybe that arm lifts. Powerful, strong, beautiful place to stay. Maybe you bend the knee, maybe you reach back. Oh, maybe you make contact. No better, no worse. And if so, maybe kicking into the hand, feeling that bow shape once again. The tension between past and future and the experience of right here, right now. We are centering in time, we're centering in place, and we unwind, stepping back, planting your hands, downward facing dog. From downward dog, ah, we've made it. Let's lower the knees down to the earth, and we're gonna just slip all the way back behind the feet. One seated integration shape, and then we'll come down onto our backs. Uh, for seated integration, an option for one more twist. Feel it out, you can skip it, okay? And seated here, maybe left leg turned inward, right leg across, and giving that right knee, right thigh a little hug here. And then we're just gonna kind of hug the leg as we turn towards the right. Once again, we're more emphasis on a nice long spine and a spacious experience than any achievement of a deep twist. You can release those right fingertips to support you going for length, maybe taking your gaze back. And simply unwind from here. We'll find this on side two. And if it's ever too much to have that bottom leg bent, you can always do this with a straight long bottom leg. And side two, we'll take that moment, a self hug. Just love yourself here, right here. And then maybe keeping that hug with that right arm and taking left hand to your heart or behind you and going for length, creating enough space in the shape that you can find that length. And then maybe your gaze comes back. And then returning. So unwinding and options for our integration of this flow, you can come onto your back for your Shavasana. You might find it nourishing to return to seated and come into a seated, quiet mindfulness and just feel the length of your spine, the space you've created for yourself. Perhaps Sense yourself as that lump of clay that's now been warmed up through all of this motion and is now pliable and available for the purpose of what it is that you most long to create.
you are welcome to remain in this integrative shape of your choice. <coughs> in this integrative shape of your choice. Just allowing yourself to soak up all that you've created here, right? Like you really moved a lot and it's well worth your time, whether in Shavasana or seated meditation, to let everything we've stirred up in that snow globe to arrive and settle. And if and when you're ready to transition from your practice back into connection and outer focus of the world, perhaps making that transition for yourself. Taking some time, wiggling your fingers and your toes, reawakening, noticing that pliability, the everything you have awakened within you. I'll come back to a few words here to close. Right. I've spent decades living in my body, never left it once, yet managed to miss all of its miracles. Isn't it funny how you can occupy a space without being in touch with it? How it took so long for me to open the eyes of my eyes, embrace the heart of my heart, kiss the soles of my swollen feet, and hear them whisper, thank you, thank you. Thank you for noticing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking this time for you. From the act of centering that's an ongoing journey within me, I bow to that journey within you. Namaste. Namaste.